This is a message from Nick. Hello, Brian and James. I live in New England and recently got a 2022 uh, Ford Mach-E. That is an electric vehicle, um, small crossover, right? Yeah. Um, my battery life, as he calls it, was originally at 230 miles. He means range. So um, the range of that car when he first got it was 230 miles or 370 kilometers. And now that it is colder out, it is 170 miles and 274. So he's lost about 100 kilometers or 50 miles roughly of uh, range. So I know about range decreasing in colder weather. My question is, does the range come back when the weather gets warmer? With the cost of new EVs, a range of 170 miles is not acceptable. Fan of the show since day one. Thanks. Wow. Yeah, thanks, Nick. That's uh, how many episodes? 140. Congratulations. Yeah. Nick, thank you for sticking with us. I don't see how you put up with Brian for that long, but uh, whatever. Whatever. Um, so, yeah, I would be bold enough to say that I think, James, you and I are the two uh, leading experts in the world on uh, yes. e EVs in cold weather. We're yes, the you've come to the right place, Nick. <laughs> Because Alaska has nothing on us. We're no. in the southern Canadian prairies where it gets to minus 40, and it has recently. Not this yes. year, but you know, it, it has. And minus 40 Celsius is the same as minus 40 Fahrenheit. That's where the two scales meet. Crossover, it, yeah. It does get that cold here. So I don't know everything about how the Mach-E um, you know, battery meter works. But yeah, usually the, the range on any car is calculated on your recent trips. So... If your recent trips have been in the cold, then your car is going to be smart enough to figure, okay, well, the next trip is going to be... So I, I assume that range will come back in the summer. What do you think? Of course it will. Yeah. But in, in a way, Brian, this is a stupid question for us. <laughs> oh, sorry, us, Nick. To people like <laughs> us. But that, that concerns me that the people buying EVs really... That there are things that, that, you know, this would be scary to somebody. Oh, yeah. And, uh, Nick's obviously an EV enthusiast, but a regular person who doesn't care, who just goes out and buys their next car, yeah. might be very concerned about this if they don't know about it. That's right. You're going to look at the, the range thing. Now, the one thing I can recommend is, um, I don't know if you can do this in, in your car, but in a Tesla, you can change the battery to percentage rather than miles or kilometers. So Yeah. When you when I first bought my car, yeah, it would give me the range in kilometers and started around 400 kilometers. Um, but then you tend to get obsessed about that range, and every time you plug it in, it's like, oh, it's it's five kilometers less than it was last time I charged it. Um, so I just switched it to percentage, and so then you don't end up obsessing about that mileage. But then if you're going on a trip, you use the trip calculator, and the trip calculator will tell you in, in a Tesla, that gives you a graph that says, okay, you'll get at your destination and your battery will be 20%. And that's what you monitor. And, you know, sometimes yeah. it's a little bit off. In a Tesla now, these days, it about 5% error is... is that's most, pretty good, though, actually, yeah. for the for this, the error getting better. It used to be about a 10% error uh, where it would tell you, oh, your battery will be 20% at your destination. And then you'd get there and it'd be more like 10%. Yeah, um, the leaf but, or is way worse, though. Is that right? It's the worst of all of them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, go that's ahead. one tip. Yeah, it's switching into percentage and not, not worrying yeah. about it. Now, when you get to the summer and it is not giving you the same range, it is always possible that your, you know, your battery has cells that have deteriorated or something. So it is something you have to, to keep an eye on, but presumably that will come back. Yeah, and the way we do it on the leaf is you put in the little data reader you buy on Amazon – it's a Bluetooth device for 20 bucks. It hooks up to an app for your car oh, yeah. that's made by a third party. Mine's called Leaf Spy. Uh, Tesla's a little different because they have a different connector. I don't know how you guys do it or even if you need to. But there would be, if you got into this, uh, you can see how your battery is doing and, and know the state of health of it. Mm -hmm. um, but this means nothing. Okay, so let's say you lived in Hawaii where it's the same temperature every day. Yeah. If you drove like a mad person for a day or two, it would show that you have a lesser battery, right? Because you're yeah. driving with a heavy lead foot. Yeah. But if you're driving like um, a, a nun, then you're going very slow and gentle, and that's going to show a higher range. So it's just, it's not really showing what your battery is capable of. It's just what it's yeah. capable of based on your recent driving. And that is a weird concept to get around to people. Yeah. 
Um, and also I'll mention too, it is typical for batteries to lose range, like battery degradation. And the typical formula seems to be you are going to lose about 5%, about 5% of your battery in the first couple of years. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of levels Slows out. Down. So I assume my battery has lost about 5% of its capacity, but I, I don't know exactly how I would confirm that. Yeah. And it's, it's not something you should obsess about. You should know that when you buy the EV, that that's why I always say buy bigger than you think you need. And, yeah. um, then you don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's always a, a good thing, but there's lots we can talk about here very quickly. Okay. Now, the first thing is that in winter, uh, a gas car loses range. You just don't notice it. You're not thinking about that. Right. Yeah. There's many factors. There is the dense winter air. So your aerodynamics are off. This affects EVs a little bit more because they're more efficient and they're also usually more um, dependent on the aerodynamics of the vehicle for efficiency. So, and then you have uh, sort of, if you put winter tires on, that's going to be less efficient for sure. That could lose you 10%. It could lose you even more depending on your winter tires. Um, there's the snow on the ground or ice on the ground. The, the fact that it's just not uh, a smooth rolling surface, that's going to, um, you know, is a, it's like if you're pedaling a bike on through snow, it's going to be harder to pedal that bike. So, right. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's different factors like that. Um, it can't hold as much of a charge, the battery in colder weather. And don't forget that you're using your battery to heat your cabin. Mm -hmm. Um, that is a lot of heat, even if it's a heat pump, even if it's just a, you know, not that cold, but a little bit cold, you're still using a lot of energy. In fact, in, uh, it's different in every car. Your car is a PTC heater. Mine is, is too. So it's just like a toaster. It's like yeah. red hot elements heating up. That's the least efficient. And then the heat pumps, sometimes there's both a heat pump and a PTC heater. Sometimes there's just a heat pump and you know, that uses less energy, but uh, it still uses energy, Brian. Yeah. No, when I checked in the Mustang Mach-E does not have a heat pump heater. So it has a, a normal. Oh, heater, really? Which is, yeah, not as, as energy efficient. So, you know, definitely going to lose range with that. Yeah. You're definitely, definitely going to use range. And you, my, my, unless you're using it to make these long trips on the highway, then that's when the only time you really need to concern yourself, unless you have a long commute. For the most part, if you can charge every night at home, you just don't think about it, Nick. Yeah. Don't think about it. Enjoy your fast heating car mm -hmm. and your efficiency and, and how wonderful it is. And, um, you know, keep us up to date too, as, as you drive it through the winter, because we're not in the worst part of winter yet. Uh, drop us a line again on how you like the car and how it made it through the winter. Yeah. And it's really only on road trips that you ever need to think about it. Like it's you, if, if you're just driving around the city, like you said, you charge at home, you know, you're, you're always going to have enough. Uh, with Tesla, they spaced the superchargers about 150 kilometers apart, roughly. It varies a bit. So that's about, you know, about 100 miles apart. So um, if you're going to go, Nick, on a road trip, you know, you want to make sure that there is a charging station roughly every 100 miles. And, you know, you should be fine. Like around here, when it does get minus 40, I don't think it's going to get to minus 40 where Nick is. So he's probably not going to have to worry about it. But they they space them about right. So mine, I've got the standard range Tesla Model 3, and it can just barely make it between chargers when it's minus 40. If it's only minus 20, minus 15 Celsius, not really an issue. I mean, it's not constantly minus 40, but no. we call that the worst case scenario around yeah, here, yeah. okay? EV drivers call that, we have to be, you want to be prepared for the worst case scenario. We've gone years without it getting that cold. Yeah. And then the last couple of years, it's gotten a few days that cold. And it, so you want to be prepared for those days. And it's usually only that cold overnight, but last right. winter, and this was covered on the podcast, I drove up to Saskatoon and the daytime temperatures was minus 36 Celsius, which is about minus 32 Fahrenheit. Daytime temperatures, this was at noon. And that's what I had to drive through and, uh, you know, just, just kind of barely made it in my standard range car. Yeah. So that's an issue. And another thing to keep in mind is if you are doing highway trips that in winter, it charges slower. Yeah. The battery can't take the charge as fast because it's, it's like regenerative braking too. You can't put yeah. 
your brakes back into the battery pack as well yeah. when it's cold. No, that's kind of the biggest thing for me because summer road trips where I'm only spending about 20 minutes at the charger, but the winter road trips in these, these cold conditions, it's more like you're spending an hour at the charger. And at that point it, it gets annoying. And I'm at the point now where if this winter I have to drive up to Saskatoon and it's minus 40, I'm, I'm good to take a gas car. Cause I just, I just don't want that, uh, have to wait an hour at the charging station. Yeah, and if, uh, you know, it's the worst case scenario in the worst place in the world is what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. And we tell people around here that it, you could lose up to 50%. It, it varies from car to car, okay? I've heard somebody talking about 17% uh, in his Ionic 5 uh, when it wasn't too cold, okay? Yeah. So, but that's like the worst, worst case scenario. Now, if you're driving around the city... And you do, you know, 60 miles in a day at the very worst, and you have, you know, 170 miles, who cares? You plug in at yeah. night, it's going to charge the same way as it always does. If you're on the highway and it takes you a half hour to charge, it might take you an hour to charge. And that's a major change too yeah. in habits to be yeah. aware of. And of course, electric cars, they're not as efficient on the highway as they are in the city. Higher speeds are tougher for electric cars. You, you drain the battery a lot faster. And I really wish that when they publicized the range for electric cars, that they did a highway figure and a city figure. I think that's the way it should be done, but they don't do that. They pick a number kind of somewhere in between the two. Yeah. But, you know, you'll get used to this, Nick. There's a lot of weird little things that people fret about when they try something new. I did it. Brian did it. It's normal. Uh, we EV owners tend to think too much, but uh, just enjoy the car. Um, you'll get used to it and uh, tell your friends about it. Oh, yes.